All right, guys. So in my other video, I showed how to do perfect calibration. What this means is it, uh, it gives you the most profit, but it can also give you um, a good amount of losses in a row. And a lot of people wouldn't be able to take that emotionally or or they'd rather just see more wins than losses. So today we're going to make a video about more conservative settings. That way you see more wins than losses, except it's going to give you a little less profit. And what I usually do to fix it is I just raise my lot size until I see numbers that I like. Um, if before it was giving me a couple dollars, now it's giving me ten, twenty dollars. So um, that's just another way to do it. But this is for those people. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, I'm gonna open up a chart on Australia US dollar. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, drag Galileo FX right onto it. I'm not gonna allow live trading yet. It hasn't been calibrated, and I'm gonna put OK. Now I'm gonna right click and go to expert advisors and strategy tester this screen will pop up it, it's already going to have the symbol on it the AUD USD and I'm going to go ahead and uh, for the model I'm going to click the first one every tick the most precise for the dates I'm just going to click um, the last two weeks or the last month and uh, period I'm going to change it to M1 spread is current and I'm not going to click optimization yet and so there's several steps to this. Usually what I do for perfect calibration is I find the long or short trend. This time I'm not gonna do that because we're on more conservative settings. So this what this will do is allow to, to trade long if it's going short or to trade short if it's going long, just in case the trend changes. So this allows that little, that little bit of extra room just in case you're not able to do anything about it in time. Now for stop loss, uh, because we're restarting calibrations, this is going to take several steps. First off, we need to find um, the best um, time frame. So Galileo doesn't recommend anything under 5.5, five, so I'm going to put consecutive bull and bear for 5.5. Five. And for now, I'm just going to do a take profit of 30. And all I'm doing is finding the best time frame. So right now I have a time frame or a period of M1. I'm going to go ahead and put start. Great, it's done. Now on the bottom tabs, you got settings, optimization results, the graph, the results. So I'm going to go to the results and I'm going to scroll all the way down. Make sure you always scroll all the way down. Sometimes it goes in halfway uh, and that gives me $3. Now I'm going to check the next time frame, M5. And I usually try to stay between the M1 and the F15 time frames because I'm very, um, how do you say, impatient to see things working. This one gives me 60 cents profit. And the last one for the M15 gives me $9 profit. So that is my perfect time frame right there. And I'm going to go ahead and double check that. I'm going to change my uh, take profit to 45, just a little bit higher. Because sometimes the lower take profits actually um, go very well with smaller time frames. So at 45, it's still at 9. And I'm just going to double check the M1 and 3. So it's important to double check everything because uh, things can change drastically. And you might think you're making good money and you got perfect settings, but you didn't double check and it might have made more money in another time frame. So our best time frame is the M15 time frame. Now, I'm going to do two things here. I'm going to take off the take profits. And what I usually do is I focus most of my money and I want I want most of my profit to come from my trailing start and my trailing step and I want my extra higher profits coming from the TP and from and then I'll put the stop loss last uh, what this does is on average it will pick up most of the profit the average profit on my trailing start and step and for the random time where it just jumps up in profit just crazy the take profit will grab that Okay, so I'm not going to do the training step yet. I'm going to do that last. So for now, I'm just going to do the perfect training start with the perfect bull and the perfect bear. What this does is when you turn on optimization, I'm going to go ahead and turn that on. And that's where these other settings come in. Optimization works with start, step, and stop settings. What this does is for the bull and bear, for example, it will start on a bull of four and it'll run calibrations and find out the results and then it'll move it up one step so a bull of five and then a bull of six a bull of seven or a bull of eight and nine ten same thing with the bear and same thing with the trade with the trailing start it'll start at 15 and it'll move it up every point 
all the way until 60. I usually keep it at 60 and 50 because I want to I wanna avoid um, it going positive and negative really fast and then ends up with a stop loss. Don't you hate that? Like it goes positive 20 bucks and I know where it goes negative 100 and it closes at 100. I would have rather gotten the 20 bucks. So I keep my trailing start and trailing step as low as possible. Well, my trailing start as low as possible. My trailing step, I try to keep it around half of my trailing start if it's possible. I'm going to go ahead and put start and I'm going to find the perfect settings for bull, bear, and start to give me the most money. Start. So now I'm going to uh, check on my optimization results right after this finishes loading. And uh, this will, what this will do is show me the perfect settings for the bull, the bear, and the trailing start to give me the most profit. Now I'm going to go ahead and click profit. And I'm going to scroll all the way up. That way I know that this is the highest amount. Sometimes it ends up halfway and you end up doing wrong. So this would have made me $19.83 profit, which is the most profit after calibrating every single setting that I put on there. For a trailing start of 47, a bullish of 6, and a bearish of 4. So I'm going to go ahead and put that 47, 6, and 4. Right here. And 4. I'm going to go ahead and uncheck it. It only optimizes everything that is checked. And now I'm going to work on the stop loss, the take profit, and the trailing step. So this is a very simple three-step process. Put OK. Oh, OK. So on my stop loss and take profit, I started at uh, my take profit. I usually like to start around half of my trailing start. So let's say 100. So I keep it at 100. That's where I wanted to start taking profit. That way it allows the trailing start to grab most of the money. Um, and I always keep a maximum of 600 just in case, uh, just to keep it high. It doesn't really matter. I've never seen something stop at 600. My stop loss, I want to start at 60. I want to do it at least half of my take profit. And I want to stop it at 600 as well. I do all my steps at one point just to keep it the most accurate. My trailing step, I started at five. Um, most brokers don't allow anything under five. So I keep it at five. My specific broker doesn't like anything under 15, but Galileo bypasses that sometimes. So I keep this at 60, I keep this at 50. I'm gonna go ahead and put stop. This one does take a little bit longer because I'm doing like 600 max. You don't need to do 600 max. I've never seen it go to 600 max. That's just me being redundant just in case something happens and I know it's not calibrating right. Now on, I, 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 I don't know if y'all noticed, on my uh, expert properties, it, uh, it showed a, um, a balance of 2000. I would go ahead and put the starting balance. Um, mine's not really 2,000, but I was helping someone else and his balance was 2,000, so it stayed at 2,000. This might take a little bit of time. Um, so, so far, the best period is the M15. I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna go ahead and put that on the M15 because I've, I've, I've done this a lot of times in the past as soon as you can set your your time frame go ahead and set your time frame a lot of people forget because they focus so much on the galileo settings and they forget the correct time frame that they tested everything on this can mean a huge difference and might even end up in big losses if you click the incorrect time frame with the settings that you did on the correct time frame so we can actually watch it or at least on my computer we can watch it work um it's at $33 profit, and right now it's testing 378 stop loss, a take profit of 166, a trailing step of 39. And as you can see, it does it a little bit differently every time, and it just calculates every single possibility that exists using these different um, cal uh, steps that I put on there, these starts and stops. As you can see right here, I'm gonna go down. Uh, max orders keep them at one if 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 you're under anti-hedge and FIFO regulations which is i think u.s canada 
uh, places like that. I don't know if anybody else in the world would actually follow those. Galileo works best with hedging and with FIFO. I mean, without FIFO. What this means is that uh, it can open up a buy trade and a sell trade at the same time. What happens is that if it's going up, right here, you see it going up, it opens up a buy trade. And you place your stop loss somewhere here. Okay? And your take profit would be somewhere up here. And you're thinking, okay, great, it's going up and up and up. It's going to go to take profit. Uh, the problem is that it might not reach in right here. You see a large drop. What will happen is it will open up a backwards trade or a sell trade instead. So you will lose your buy trade because of the stop loss. And then your sell trade, because it opens up at almost the same time, would be like down here. So it will end up closing your buy trade and your sell trade will already be open and you'd be end up making making this difference. So that's what hedging does. It can open up buy, buys and sells to help uh, limit your, your risks. Okay, uh, FIFO, what does that mean? Uh, for example, you open up five trades, one, two, three, four, five, but usually because it opens up so many trades, the last trade starts making money first. That's, or, or it, it doesn't really start making money the, the correct way, the way you open them up. FIFO regulations first in first out means that if you open them one two three four five, uh, the trades need to close in the same order as they were open. So they need to close at one two three four five, even though number five is making profit and number one might never make profit. So in order to avoid that, I keep my max orders at one. Boom. I keep up max orders at one. And that's why I've, oh look, it's done optimizing. So I'm gonna go over here, find out, find out my ultimate profit. Remember to scroll up. It would have been thirty-four dollars and fifty cents. That's my most profit. At a stop loss of three seventy-six, a take profit of one sixty-nine, and a trailing step of thirty-nine. Okay, so at this point, what what I usually do is I look at the drawdowns, making sure that it's one of the lower drawdowns. At thirty-nine sixty-five, that's not a bad drawdown. Um, you really want to keep the drawdown less than your than your profit, but sometimes that's not possible. So, thirty nine sixty five drawdown, thirty four fifty profit, and you go down thirty four forty, thirty four thirty, thirty four twenty five, thirty four twenty. All this is acceptable to me. I can go down at least thirty four. So now I'm gonna go look at all these stop loss and take profits and find ones. They're all about the same. They're all about the same trailing step. Uh, what I usually like doing is I choose, um, I like choosing a bigger take profit and a, a smaller stop loss. If that's not an option, then I just leave it as is. Usually people like doing uh, a take profit. Let's say if it's 100, they want the stop loss half of that. That way one take profit can cover two stop losses. Since that's not an option here, I'm gonna go ahead and use these settings, 376, 169, and 39. And 39 so I'm gonna go ahead and uncheck everything remember checking means that that's what the optimizer looks for or tests and I'm gonna go ahead and start it Th what this does it'll it'll check everything as a normal so I'm gonna go ahead and go to my results scroll down 15 bucks profit go to my graph it looks like it dropped twice what this means is that that's when the trend changed and it wasn't able to keep up in time that's fine to me uh, you always want more consecutive wins than losses. This is seven wins in a row, one loss in a row. Overall, did we lose a lot of money? Mm, $13 out of 25 trades. Maximum drawdown, $39. Maximum drawdown means it's how much negative it can usually get before it goes back into the positive. Um, loss trades is percent of my total or three losses for my long uh overall three losses 22 wins uh, so i like these numbers so what i'm gonna do 
is um, I'm gonna go ahead and put them in to my um, to my actual Galileo. Let me write these numbers down: three seven six one sixty nine forty seven thirty nine six and four. Go ahead and put OK. Um, what I see for results is I make sure that I'm not getting too many negatives in a row and I'm not and the max negative is gonna be like 18 bucks for a two thousand um, dollar account and these modifications are doing great and finally taking profit good 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 okay I'm gonna go ahead and input these here properties uh, lot size I keep it dynamic and I keep it at 1% risk uh, that's about the average risk the most professional traders take I'm not a professional I just I don't like doing reinventing the wheel you know if most people do it that way and they're professionals I just do what they do oh no it's 376 right I was looking at the wrong side 376 169 47 39 16 okay let me just double check this yes okay now right here I'm gonna make sure that my time frame is at the correct time frame right click go to my expert advisors properties everything is correct lot size zero risk percentage one the mass percentage, max percentage that most traders do would be 2%. Uh, max order is 1. In the beginning, if you have like less than 500 bucks, let's say, or less than $2,000, uh, even if you put risk percentage 1, it's still going to open up the minimum amount trade, which is 0 0.01. Um, so there's that. As you make more money, what this does is that it starts automatically increasing your lot size. If you lose money, it starts automatically lowering your lot size. Uh, the magic number a lot of people have questions about this unless you have more than one specific ea for example uh, galileo is one ea and let's say this mac d sample is another ea if i if i want to have both of these running on separate charts on my overall trading account i need to change my magic number otherwise what the magic number does is it allows Galileo to know which trades are Galileo's and and it allows MACD to know which trades are MACD's if you have the same magic number for both of them then it's going to start confusing and it's, it's going to start saying uh, MACD is going to start interfering with Galileo's trades and things like that we don't want that so for this we leave the magic number by itself if you have multiple Galileo's it's fine to leave the magic number as is you don't need to change it otherwise change it to 2746 or something 746 or 742 something like that it's in the guide so that's the only reason you want to change the magic number is if you're using multiple EAs at once go ahead and put OK and actually if there's not a smiley face here if there's a frowning face that means one of two things you either got the auto trading off or you got the allow trading off and go ahead and click modification of settings and you should be good now uh, allow import of external experts what this does is uh, it allows another another person to another person with their own expert to control your account <clears throat> so i'm going to go ahead and put ok and turn to a happy face and there we go that's how you do conservative settings with galileo